Welcome to the Eli and Edith Broad Art Museum at Michigan State University. My name is Michelle Ward and I'm the Director of Education here at the museum. In our busy lives, we spend a lot of time on autopilot. Sometimes we leave our house, keys in hand, and arrive at our destination unsure of the space in between. When we look at art, we're challenged to slow down, to observe closely, and in doing so, we are confronted with the opportunity to ask questions. Questions that may encourage us to reconsider, redefine, rethink our habits of mind and our world view. To re-engage with the world around us with fresh eyes and a fresh perspective that values questioning the status quo. Today, we are standing in an exhibition by artist Jenny Kendler titled The Long Goodbye. And this artist is doing just that, inviting us to slow down and to question. She pointedly asks, what do we hold precious and why? Have you ever stopped to consider how we assign value? This work that we're gonna look at today prompts us to consider, to reconsider ways of seeing and interacting with the world that go beyond economic transactions. Come on, let's take a look. So the first work of art we're going to see today, you may actually hear before you see it. So the work is called Shell Game, Forget Me Not. And we learn a little bit about the title actually when we look at the back side where we can read that it says, Forget Me Not. This is a reference to shell craft that was made in the late 18th and 19th centuries. And they were called Sailor's Valentines. And, and much like this form is elaborately covered in seashells, these were mosaics made of seashells. And they were popular gifts to be given by those returning from long oceanic voyages. Here, Kendler has covered something that many of us would have had in our homes at one point in time that might have been our prized possession, and that's a vintage boom box. The sound that you hear is the reference to acidification of the ocean. So what exactly is ocean acidification? It's a process that's been going on since approximately the 1750s with the Industrial Revolution. By burning fossil fuels, we increase the levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. That has then absorbed into the oceans. And when carbon dioxide is absorbed into the ocean, it mixes with the salt water and it produces carbonic acid. Carbonic acid makes the water more acidic. And this is particularly threatening to certain marine creatures that build, that make shells and skeletons like what we see here to protect them. The sound is made by the artist. And here's another moment where we see the artist playing with things that might be saved, things that we might think of as precious. Here, the artist takes a baby tooth and drops that tooth in acid, her baby tooth, and recorded the sound. Let's take a look at another work. So as we move into the center of the gallery, you'll notice a large light table. And on the light table are pieces of amber, pieces that are raised up, almost as if you might see something displayed in a jewelry store. What do you first think of when you think of amber? Many of us may think of its role in beads, in jewelry, and other types of ornamentation. Amber itself is an organic material that's derived from the resin of extinct species of trees. These trees would have grown in dense forests 10 to 100 million years ago. And when the resin dropped from these trees, it would have been carried by rivers to coastal regions. Interestingly, when that resin dropped as it hardened, it was common for plants, for animals, for insects to become trapped in the resin. And so while we may value amber as a gemstone, scientists value it for a very different reason. They value the history, the DNA that's embedded within bits of resin. 
we can actually see more details. And in some cases, DNA has been extracted from fossilized specimens within amber. Here, the artist has created her own amber archive. And she started the project by researching species that were under threat of extinction. This piece asks us to really think hard about what we value and why. What's more important to us? The gemstones, like amber, like diamonds, like precious metals that we use to adorn our lives, that are extracted, oftentimes violently, from our Earth, affecting everything within the region? Or is it the species that she has embedded samples of within these bits of amber. Let's take a look at another work. So the last piece we're gonna look at here is this installation. It's titled Whale Bells. And much like the other works that are in Jenny Kindler's show, it takes a lot of slow observation to uncover the pieces that are important. What is perhaps most important in this piece is what we see inside the glass bells. These do make noise. And in a minute, you'll be able to hear that. If you come into the museum, I suggest you find a gallery guide and ask them to activate it for you so you can hear the sound that it makes. The sound is made from what is inside and Wrapped up around this knotted macrame are bits of fossilized whale ear bone. And this piece is making reference to the advanced communication, auditory communication of whales, and specifically it's referencing humpback whales and the songs that they sing to one another. When we ring this, the sound we hear is reminiscent of that sound. This body of work was first commissioned by National Geographic, and a group of whale bones are now permanently installed on the ice class polar vessel Endurance. The whale ear bones that are inside, in some ways, as they make this noise, this sound, they've been returned to a previous function. So these are fossilized whale bones from an ancient whale species that is now extinct. As you move through this work and the other works that we've looked at today, I encourage you to move slowly, to listen carefully, and to look at the details. Slow down and put yourself in a new frame of mind. Think about the question that Jenny Kindler asks us. What is precious to us? What do we place value on and why? Maybe you'll leave with some different answers than you came in with today. If you'd like to see this show up close and personal, book a ticket online, grab your mask. We'd love to see you.